All right, hey everybody, and welcome to the 90 Minute Art Challenge. I'm your host, Bobby Chu, and I also have on here my co host, Masei Seki. Hello, everyone. And today, as you can see from the uh, image, we have a very special guest, the one and only Nikolai Lockertson. Thank you very much, Bobby. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure and honor. The honor is ours for sure. And uh, yeah, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting the scene. What What's the scene from Massey? Um, this one is from Blade Runner. Oh, okay. The new Blade Runner. Okay. Because I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought I remember. I think, Nico, you actually um, recognize this image or something. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I'm a big Blade Runner fan. And uh, I also think the Blade Runner 2049 was uh, very, very good. So this is from from that movie, the new one. Right on. And uh, for those of you that might not know who our incredible guest is today, um, Boom! This is Nikolai's awesome Instagram account. Look at these. You got it. You got animations here and stuff. Like definitely give him a follow. He has one of the most popular courses on schoolism, actually. Um, so definitely, you know, give him a follow if you haven't heard. If you didn't know, if you didn't, if you haven't been following, some really just gorgeous stuff really cool thank uh, you so much bobby yeah mm -hmm. well thank you for being here with us uh this is gonna be fun and anybody can go to tumblr.com search up 90 min art challenge you'll find us there and you can find today's challenge you can you know go to this and just download that image and every time we um encourage everybody to upload their stuff onto instagram hashtag 90 min art challenge you can see there's thousands on there and every week, we'll show a few of our favorites. So you can see somebody's already done this challenge. Mm -hmm. Nice. This cool. was from the other day. Very cool stuff. Somebody's trying the boxy method there. It's really neat. Yeah. Mm. And this one is a combo between like what we were doing. And it's like um, Cody Gramstad, what he was talking about using dissolved paint with. It's very interesting. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool style. You know, it's like tons of inspiration. Mm hmm And this all, that's like a, a blend mode, isn't it? Right, right. So it's like 100% yeah. opacity, but just tiny little pixels, right? Oh, yeah. Like a spray almost. Yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, you don't usually think to paint with it, generally. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like painting with noise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a neat way that Cody was able to figure that um, method out. Yeah, cool. I always love seeing how we all start. By the way, I really love seeing it because it's like that's when generally you you have the most chance to be totally different, right? It's like what is mm -hmm. what are those first few marks that everybody chooses to put down. Yeah. Yeah, for me it's yeah. also a bit getting to know the tool, you know, the the cool Magma Studio. So, you know, getting the hang of the uh, how it works and uh, yeah, how yeah. I can use it to kind of squeeze my style into it, so to say. Well, you killed it. Like, yeah, and usually you use um procreate so magma is far closer to photoshop than it is to procreate and you adapted mm -hmm. like really really quick mm -hmm. that was fun it's uh, magma studio is fun it's uh, uh, like you said i always use procreate for everything i do and i'm very into my brushes and um i have my way of working so my brain automatically goes through okay f to do when i look at the image the reference i'm like okay I'm, i will use this brush for that i will blur or smudge this and you know my brain is already planning but then i'm in magma studio i was like okay i can't use that i have to 
just take everything it down to, yeah, <laughs> a bit more back to the basics, mm -hmm. which is really cool. But it, uh, yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice way to uh, to paint with the magma. It's simple, but it's uh, powerful. Yeah, for me, it's like I'm so used to painting a character and spending so much time on a character. And then this is like you don't spend time on the character at all, really. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the challenge for me to kind of wrap my head mm -hmm. around. OK, what am I going to spend my time doing here? Yeah. Yeah, it's also an image that has so much uh, faded values and color. So I would definitely use a lot of smudge and and I, I like grain. I like to have some texture in my brushes. So with my airbrush, for example, it's a bit grainy. It's a bit spray. So, but it's it's uh, interesting when you take those main tools away. It's like no, see what how you solve this now. You know, <laughs> but it was uh, but yeah fun. It, it's still interesting, like, even though, like, all those uh, tools were kind of, like, removed and not in Magma, uh, the, like, wh when I saw your final result, it's just, like, it still looked amazing. And it kind of goes to show that um, it's really, like, the, the knowledge that you have that kind of makes the picture rather than the tools that mm. are provided to you. So I thought, I, I found it really amazing to see that. It really, yeah, that's such a good point. It's like now that you have the knowledge of like fundamentals or whatever, you know, it, mm. it's far easier for you to start on a completely different thing and do <clears throat> moderately well at it, right? And mm. it's like, especially those initial marks, you can see very, very quickly what starts to develop, which is very cool. Um, by the way, everybody, you know, it's it's so hard to kind of understand a lot of times what those in the, those very, very initial marks are because they're so abstract and you kind of hope to have that person be there to explain it to you, perhaps mm. even have something like a class on schoolism, <laughs> which Nico does. He has an amazing class on here, one of the most popular classes on schoolism. It's uh, Procreate with Nikolai Lockerston. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there you yeah, go. It's a, f it's a full on course. It's uh, everything from getting into perspective, characters, environments, uh, uh, animation yeah pretty much everything making brushes so it's mm -hmm. uh if you want to break into procreate and really understand it well i i must uh recommend this course because it is uh, it's very very good <laughs> i recommend it too i i watched the videos as well and i learned like i was always hesitant to use like even though i had procreate on my ipad there was just this like wall that I just couldn't get past because um, I never really learned how to use it properly. So mm. for you to really go into like settings and explain how to, you know, adjust certain things and especially like the um, the finger uh, gestures. Yeah, that like was like, menu. yeah, that, that was amazing to me. And just like those little uh, tips helped me a lot to just like get more comfortable with Procreate. So Cool. highly recommend <laughs> yeah i've, I've right. seen um videos and such about like how to use procreate and everything but the real big difference that you know we want to look for that i found in in the way that you taught is like okay this isn't just how to like use procreate and the different functions mm -hmm. this is how i use it i'm a professional artist and i use procreate as my main tool and that's what really like came out of that for me is like this this real feeling of trust like okay this person uses these tools this way you know and knows what he's doing mm. no yeah no. that made it so much easier because you know sometimes you learn things and it's like well okay press f and it does this press y it does this you know it's like okay how do i use that though 
why why would mm. I want to do that? Mm. You know, that's what yeah. I like. Uh, I've been trying to learn Blender on my spare time and stuff. And like the oh, yeah. videos that really resonate are the ones where there's a purpose to why you're telling me the thing that you're telling me. You know, this is how mm. I use mm. it, right? Yeah. And no, it's, it's uh, yeah. Also with Procreate, it's it's kind of like a wolf and sheep clothing. You know, you it's very simple. The menu, everything is very m minimalistic when you open it, and you can. If you never used it before, you can start painting and drawing very quickly because it's intuitive and it's fast to get started. But it has these layers of more advanced stuff for the people that wants to get into that. So it mm -hmm. it has the the possibility to become very professional and fast and you know super workflow and really great tools. The brushes are amazing. And yeah. So yeah. I can't say enough good things about Procreate. It's really very, very good. And currently, are you still on an iPad doing this uh, challenge? Yes. That's awesome. I, I don't have any other. Uh, I have a Mac that I'm using for stuff that it's that isn't possible on the on the iPad, but uh, I don't have any tablet or any other pen, like a Wacom or anything. I'm, I only have uh, the iPad and the Apple Pencil. So, that, yeah. That's so ideal. <laughs> Just having like minimal yeah. um, stuff around your yeah. desk. No, it's very easy to just, you know, bring with you. Your office is in a small bag and you and just take it mm -hmm. anyway. So when it's not Corona times, then I can sit in a cafe and work all day, for example. And That's amazing. I'm not yes. there yet. True. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to survive without uh, two or more monitors, I think. Um, yeah, but when you're drawing, do you feel you need it then? Yeah, I don't know why. I, I feel like I do. I, I. What do I put there? I put some reference sometimes mm. you, you know mm. put netflix yeah. in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i if i need reference when i'm sitting in a, in a cafe for example i just use the split screen mode on the ipad mm. oh and, the, and there's like there's two advantages of that one uh, it's an advantage but it's kind of like disguised as a disadvantage is that procreate then gets even less space, but it makes you much more focus on your composition and your silhouette and the, the, the thumbnail part of your sketching. So if, if half the screen or a third of the screen is uh, occupied with uh, inspiration or reference, then uh, you get more thumbnail -y with your drawings, which is really true. makes you quick and uh, you get a nice uh, starting point. You know, I just wish that they had a desktop version. That would be amazing. Right? Because, yeah. like, <laughs> you can do pressure sensitivity with your fingers now and everything on, on a lot of, like, the Cintiq monitors and such. It yeah. would be great to, yeah. But anyways, I digress. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have the the discord community on here everybody so hey discord people uh feel free to join in on the conversation and as you can see everybody is also painting on discord which is awesome and you can come and join in on the lightbox expo discord channel to join in with everybody else it's awesome uh oh they're looking great so far yeah. Does anybody in Discord want to um, mm. say hi? Hi. <laughs> hi, Nicolo. <laughs> hello, 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 everyone. Hello. I just want to say I love your artwork. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It looks so amazing, and I really like how you do like your textures and line work, and yeah, just a fan. <laughs> 
Oh, thank you. Happy to hear that. Actually, I have a question for you, Nico. Yep. So, um, I guess looking at your uh, your paintings on your Instagram, um, I realized that there's this kind of like a range of color that it seems like you tend to lean towards. And I was just wondering, is that like um, when you do those kind of paintings, do you generally have um, references available or is it kind of like you've done it so many times that you know like how this color works with this color or like in this lighting, for example? It's, uh, uh, I agree that a lot of, especially stuff that I posted lately has a lot of the same color theme. It's kind of like the winter, cold, warm, uh, mm -hmm. color theme which is kind of like the the easiest color theme to kind of get right in a way when you have mm -hmm. a, maybe a cold winter environment and then you have a flame or something that gives that warm light it's sort of uh, that's a very easy uh, color theme to kind of uh, make look nice in a way you know it's uh, um, but I I always have some inspiration around me as well when i'm painting i i put up my mood boards and and references and stuff but i it's mainly just to kick the brain uh, mm. uh, to start with and then after i start painting uh, i forget the world around me so i <laughs> i sort of stop looking at the reference or the inspiration uh, because i just get into the painting part of it so uh, then it becomes more a communication between what I'm painting and the brain it's sort of like a ping pong match I do something and the brain is liking it or not and then uh, it's then more back and forth but then sometimes I'm if I feel that I can't get it right I I might look at something else you know it's like what's wrong I I keep flipping it forth and back I I use the the curves or hue saturation brightness nodes to kind of just mm -hmm. mess with it. But uh, stuff like complementary like colors, you know, are easy to get right in a way. And mm -hmm. when you have like blue and orange, the the warm cold, you have the red and green, and and also the yellow and purple. Or if you stick to more neighboring colors, it's also working really well but uh, I very often like value is more important than color so I try to get the value right first at least to to start up so most of the times I would start out with uh, just value just grayscale oh, and, uh, cool. not to do all details and stuff like that but uh, <clears throat> just to get the sketch the composition going and then I might add color on the early stage, but I also might wait until I feel like the the value is is good. Mm. I I really like the fact that like how you mentioned at a certain point you start to like you know leave the references aside and kind of let your brain and your hand do the working because uh, for me there's times when I kind of get so caught up in the reference and caught up in all the details that I want to get it so accurate. But yeah. it kind of defeats the whole purpose of reference where um, when you want to create your own uh, personal piece, because it's yeah. like you're trying to create your own world inspired by the real world. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's always been a goal for me to be able to paint anything without having reference. Um, mm -hmm. And but so to to have the brain as a best possible library, right? But mm -hmm in order to have the best possible library, you have to fill that library. And the way to do that is to paint from reference. So I think it's smart and important to do studies. Uh, but that can be just just studies like we do here uh, in Magma, right? And then we mm -hmm. then you fill the brain with books and then but it's important to use those books. So then when you paint uh, just from imagination, then you have to, then you start opening the books that you put in there. And so I think it's important to do both uh, paint from reference and then paint.
paint just from imagination and to do both. Because um, when I'm painting my own artwork, I very seldomly copy what I see. It's more, then it turns more into inspiration than mm -hmm. to reference in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's a person in Slido that was asking, Jerowen, Switzerland says, a question for Nico. Are you involved in the development of Procreate, like a beta tester or something like that? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. got your hands on the an animating stuff for Procreate, like how long before it launched, you think? Well, we at least half a year before, oh, maybe wow. more. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I started using Procreate for all my work in 2012. Um, so that's when I just left Photoshop for good and uh, started doing all my stuff on in Procreate. I was also before the Apple Pencil and uh, iPad Pro that came in 2015. Now, so I've been a fan uh, oh. for a long time. What do you mean? What were but, you painting uh, with? Yeah, a regular finger? iPad and and a dumb stylus, like a oh. two dollar stylus, oh. and mostly. Because you wow. had before you had pressure sensitivity, you had speed sensitivity, uh. which emulated that gave that sort of, um, yeah. So it's not as good as pressure, of course, uh, but it does something that makes it more uh, organic than just one pressure in a way. So, um, no, so I, I, uh, I remember mailing, this was in 2011. That's when I discovered Procreate. I was emailing uh, James Kuda, the CEO. Of the, <laughs> and just straight to, to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they were, they were a team of less than five people back then. So they were, I think they were working from uh, James's uh, house or something. They just had a small room that was sort of the savage office back then. Oh, wow. And I emailed uh, James and two hours later I got a response. Um, and we have been good friends ever since. So I, I tried to give them all the feedback I have and beta testing is one part or um suggestions for tools or how the tool can work differently or yeah so some of the stuff in procreate is uh is stuff that i've suggested which is uh, which is cool <laughs> cool that's, that's awesome. great it's very neat <laughs> yeah. no wonder the procreate app is so good <laughs> <laughs> No, there's so many I'm amazing not, features yeah i'm not gonna take uh any credit but uh i feel like i'm the the biggest fan of procreate mm. yeah. here's another procreate uh question what is the size of your canvas when you start a drawing on procreate usually and generally how many layers do you usually end up with uh when you're finished your painting from anonymous yeah, uh, I I most often start with 6,000 pixels wide or high, depending on if it's like a portrait mode or landscape mode. At the widest, I, I want to have 6,000 pixels. Um, unless it's going to be a print that I know that ha needs more than that. But usually for concept art or character design and stuff like that, I go for... 6,000 pixels, which which gives me then the layer limit in Procreate, um, depending on how high the canvas is. Maybe somewhere between 20 and 30 layers. Um, and that also depends on which iPad you're on. But uh, so that's, I think that's also a comfortable layer limit unless I'm doing animation. Um, I don't want to have gazillion layers so 
I try to keep less than 20. Um, mm. If it's a very, like if I do client work, I end up having more layers because I, you very often need to change something or move something or you need more flexibility in case of not merging layers. But if it's just my own artwork, I tend to merge often. But I, I would always keep stuff that overlaps very uh, in separate layers if it's not uh, you know a character would always be on a separate layer and then mm -hmm. I also like to d use different blend modes on layers so uh, uh, yeah and those has to stay separate of course got it yeah <laughs> I remember at this point in the in the painting we're we're doing now, I I, I thought I lost my pressure sensitivity, but it oh, was yeah. just uh, I clicked on something that makes you only go from one to ten pixels instead of from one to a hundred <laughs> pixel brush. <laughs> so I <laughs> tried to fill this this sort of this close up uh, truck on the left side is. Oh thing. yeah, <laughs> that would have taken at least like half an hour. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Where's the paint it's bucket?" <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, th at this point, your painting looks like art. Like it, it looks amazing already because it's like just seeing the um the the buildings in the background. It and like having the lighting and especially like that little like light coming from behind that like one blocky area it's it looks great <laughs> <laughs> and for you to you know use magma for i guess your first time this you know no. like i said it kind of goes to show how much uh knowledge is like you know it doesn't matter about the tool it's about the knowledge well to a certain degree i i used magma a couple of times also during the the lightbox live event we had uh, last year Oh, that was yeah. fun to be like several people painting on the same uh, drawing. Uh, that was cool. Rewana on YouTube says, I had Nico as a teacher for iPad drawing at art school. You are the reason I saved up to buy myself an iPad and to learn and draw digitally. Also, you were a really fun teacher. Yay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank that's you so great. much. <laughs> that's from Rivona. That's very nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, and I bet there's a lot of people who benefit from like just being able to buy, uh, buy the iPad because then that kind of reduces a lot of costs for, for example, buying buying Photoshop, buying a you know a, a big tablet or a Cintiq, yeah. and yeah, computers and stuff. So. I think it's for, in terms of budget, like being able to learn how to use Procreate is probably just, you know, super helpful. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, Procreate is $10 and that's once. It's not the sub yeah. subscriptions, you pay that once and then you're you're done. The license is yours. <laughs> and, and, uh, and... Yeah, and they keep giving you updates. I, I kind of <laughs> feel like I, I bought, uh, Toyota Prius back in the day, which was cool, but it wasn't amazing. And then twice a year, they come with a new car. It's like, we're just going to take your old one. And here's a new, much cooler car. So at this point, it's like a Bugatti Veyron or something that's uh, that I paid uh, yeah, $10 for back in the day. And it's crazy. Yeah. I see like K will sketch a lot more using Procreate now. I, I think she still like will bring it into Photoshop and like paint it up and stuff. But mm. I see her using the Procreate like on the iPad a lot more in, like with her work. Mm. Yeah. No, it's, it, uh, you know, if you, uh, if you have your Photoshop brushes, you can bring them into Procreate now which I think was a big uh, deal for for people who wanted to switch or wanted to try. Oh, that's awesome. Mm. 
So the ABR brushes, you just bring them in and they work fine. I still barely know how to use my iPad to tell you the truth, like transferring files and stuff. I just, I, do, I still don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I can teach you, Bobby. <laughs> I can do a little course. That's no problem. Uh, also, my, my setup is super simple. I, I send the backup to Dropbox uh, straight from the, the oh. iPad. Oh, okay. And it's usually a Procreate file or a PSD file because you can also um, put the PSD file from Procreate. Uh, excuse me. And um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. That's the my backup. That's the client stuff. Then I just uh, copy a link from my Dropbox to the email and send it to the client, for example. So that's... Uh, you know, something that I did take from our... Um, from this painting session as we were talking and everything the discussions were interesting and you mentioned Luma right that's yeah. what it's called Luma, Luma Fusion Luma, Luma Fusion, Fusion. Yeah. yeah to do all of your video editing and I was yeah. like what's that I don't get that I don't know and then you're like no no it's all you need just trust me I was like okay I feel a little nervous, but I'm going to trust Nico. <laughs> and I bought it. It was like 40 yeah. bucks or something, like 30, 40 bucks. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was awesome. I used it to paint this thing here. This is the watercolor painting for um, the Exchangelings challenge wow. that we are doing with Iris Compete. And she also has her exchangelings painting watercolor that she's going to be giving away i'm going to be giving away mine during the challenge as well and look at that there's Massey's. we're all going to be giving mm -hmm. away paintings um wow. yeah it's going to be fun it's just a free thing we're just doing just for kicks and giggles um and this is happening on Friday. I want to say Friday. Uh, next Friday. Next Friday. That's right. They look gorgeous, these paintings. But but did you do them not in Luma Fusion, right? No, no. I was I, I recorded it um, with my oh. iPhone and stuff, and I used Luma Fusion to put together the video. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. usually it's such a pain. I don't understand my phone. I don't I, like. I don't understand these files and stuff. Um, yeah. You know, like one time, a, a lot. You know, it's how dumb I am. But a long time ago, I tried to, you know, hook up my phone to my computer and said, "Hey, you want to sync your phone to your computer?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." And then I erased everything off my freaking computer. I guess I was oh, using no. a different computer or something. It wasn't the usual, you know, thing that I used, right? This is years ago. I'm fine now. But uh, okay. <laughs> after that, I'm just so nervous with, like, yeah. my Apple products and, like, syncing it to anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyways. Uh, yeah, so to I... get those videos off and to make a video from yeah. my phone, and comp it, it was like a nightmare. So that was really helpful. Yeah. No, I I uh, I'm glad you I'm glad you enjoy the Luma Fusion. It's um, I feel like they there, you know, there's a few professional apps for the iPad because it's still a lot of sort of goofy apps that are more for only beginners or just to play with and stuff like that. It's more toys than tools. Mm -hmm. But Procreate is definitely a professional tool, and so is Luma Fusion for editing and stuff. They're, totally. they're kind of like the Procreate of the editing world. So yeah. it's. Um, yeah, and like software wise, really, like 30, yeah. 40 bucks, that is a steal. Yeah. For mm -hmm. really great and software. And it's the same. It's the same you paid once, and then it's yours, and free updates. That's a tough so, business. Uh, it's a tough business for them to be in. Yeah, yeah, that's a very well, tough model, you know, because <laughs> yeah. you got to keep it's... paying those employees. Yeah. To but, help uh, service somebody that bought something like how many years ago, did you say seven years ago or something? 
still servicing yeah. you you know like somebody like you that paid 10 bucks seven years ago that's tough <laughs> yeah no it's crazy yeah but uh bless their souls for doing such a great bless job their souls and uh <laughs> and just uh people just have to keep buying these uh you know if uh, if uh, if an app is that good it it's gonna keep selling itself because people are bragging about it and uh, you know it's gonna catch catch fire um uh, well deserved so it's uh i i love that there's some tools that are really uh, or, and software developers that are taking the ipad seriously as a as a real tool not just a fun toy mm -hmm. that's a tough one that's a tough one especially because mm -hmm. you, you like um well procreate is only on apple products they're not on android products yeah. that makes the whole pool of customers much smaller but anyways mm. I, I don't know i'm just thinking like um oh, if that was my business uh, i think that'd be tough i don't know <laughs> but they yeah. know what they're doing i don't know what they're doing well if if i don't know how many ipads uh is ar around in the world but uh if you can sell your app to half of them, then oh, you'd be a number one a seller. <laughs> you'd be killing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's very yeah. true. <laughs> Oops, what happened? There's my download folder. Okay. Oh, yeah. download <laughs> folder again. Come on. Oh, <laughs> it's a glitch in the Matrix or the. <laughs> it's a glitch in the Blade Runner. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, mm -hmm. I feel like we're hogging up your time here. You know, everybody in Discord, there's tons of you. Anybody want to join in and join in on the conversation here? Yeah, if anyone has any questions. I think everybody is uh, focusing on their work. Okay. <laughs> right now. That's but, totally uh, cool. Yeah. If you have a question, chime in. I see Iceland Sun is here, maybe. <laughs> Got a wisdom nugget for us. <laughs> well, while we're waiting, I would love to talk about Masse, your your painting here, because like obviously um it's different. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking here? What what's the plan? What's the idea? What's the inspiration? Anything? <laughs> um well uh the, this um 90 minute challenge i kind of wanted to be a bit more uh creative so i just took the painting i had the same composition and um i just wanted to add some sort of like stuff in the the background so uh the lights from those uh i'm sorry i didn't really watch the the recent blade runner but i'm guessing they're trucks or cars or something but yeah, I was thinking, the vehicles. yeah, the vehicles. So I thought like, oh, it'd be cool if it was some sort of creature. And mm. then I look over and I see my cats. So I'm like, sure, cats. <laughs> 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 so I put like a, a bunch of them in the background. And then um, after that, I started thinking like, how can I build the story? And then um, later on, you'll see that I'll draw some mice in the foreground. And, you know, they're like holding this thing. And then it's like, it's these cats that are trying to get them to get you know to steal that uh orb so i think that was my thought process when i was doing this nice uh, yeah, it's really yeah i was so uh into the into the reference so i yeah just kind of dived into into that but uh, i tried to be a bit more playful towards the end but uh i thought what you guys did was uh, a lot more fun it's neat seeing how many times we all just kind of pause and just sit there, you know, like mm. you're paused right now. You're just kind of, I don't know, letting us catch up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel you're sort of ahead of, of me at this point. I'm, I'm probably looking through the menu buttons. It's like, how do I do this or that? I was obviously That's... thinking aliens. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. No. No, I, I, uh, 
if you like Blade Runner, uh, I love that world. You know, the, uh, we recently watched um, uh, Altered Carbon, a Netflix series, and that's like, uh, especially the first season is great, but it's it's so cool because it could be a, like a parallel story going on in that Blade Runner world. They're they're heavily inspired by it, so it's. You know that world is so huge. It could be, mm -hmm. you could have like a thousand stories to tell. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, yeah, I recommend that, especially for the visual part. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking silhouettes at this point. You know, it's uh, it's also a way I, I like to do line art or sketch, but I also like to just block out the silhouette when I do, for example, a character. So in this uh, case, that's pretty much it for the character. It's basically just a silhouette with some pace in front. What I really learned from uh, watching and painting with you is just like how, how well those um, hard edges really helped you, you know, along with your painting. I didn't do that at all. I was just thinking, ah, oh, it's foggy, it's blurry. I'm gonna have these soft edges, but it's like you you did very hard edge stuff, and then you put all this atmosphere over top, right? Yeah. And then it created yeah. this wonderful feeling. Yeah, I'm kind of, in a way, simple, straightforward in how I paint. I, I, I try to in a way paint it the way it would have been built if it was a set you you kind of start with the big shapes and then you you put on the haze or the smoke uh, after you kind of built the set and stuff so i think my way of painting is is very straightforward in a way it's, it's uh how, how you would build it, at least when I do environments and perspective and stuff. You start mm -hmm. with the floor and the walls and the ceiling and then it's the the big tables uh, or the fridge and that sort of stuff and then it's okay what's on the table and then it's the light and you know. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. That's mm -hmm. I think um, one of the first things that I caught on and really learned from uh, watching you paint like uh, as I was painting too, was the windows. Um, at first, I was trying to draw every single stroke. And then yeah. I saw you did these, um, I think you just did a selection and you removed some parts and then you locked that layer and then put in different valleys and different colors. Yeah. Um, that's That was very efficient. And it it's like, and it's good because then, you know, that area isn't necessarily like the biggest focus. So you don't really need to put like a lot of detail to it so mm. that was like the biggest takeaway from you know being able to paint beside you and knowing you know taking a bit of your your mm. sh uh shortcuts yeah and that was really fun yeah yeah it's uh thinking in silhouette again you know it it's mm -hmm. uh if if i would do it in in procreate i would do it the same way I would just probably punch the hole in that wall so but but the effect would be the same so either you have your your uh, the reflections or so in a layer on top or you have a hole in that bigger wall so you paint behind to make whatever is in the reflections or what you see inside the windows but it's always mm -hmm. nice to be able to alpha lock your layer so you can just freely paint with a big brush or so and not uh, having to keep within those boundaries yeah mm. it, you, you you definitely put less emphasis on areas that's not you know necessary which is really nice yeah i i um i also had all of these four screens up at the same time I on my iPad so my canvas wasn't more than that quarter that we see now so I never zoomed in beyond that which also helps because then I you paint it faster 
yeah, you don't get caught yeah. in the detail. You don't zoom in and start fiddling. Um, you, yeah, I, I don't feel like I was fast at all in this painting because I, <laughs> I was also having to get used to how I did this and that. But I, in the end, it was uh, quicker. I sort of dragged my ass along in the beginning, but then eventually <laughs> I, I got a little momentum. So, but having it small is, uh, yeah, I really recommend that when painting, you know, get the, get the thumbnail working. Right on. It's very efficient. John P. In, uh, on YouTube says, Hello from London. Love Nico's work. I subscribed to Schoolism for his course and then stayed on for all the other amazing courses. And that's right. Once you get a Schoolism subscription, then you get access to all the courses on Schoolism. So it's over 40 courses. And I just saw last night, in the middle of the night, Helen Mingju Chen production designer on Raya, The Last Dragon, coming out from Disney, she tweeted out, just finished her last video for her new Schoolism course coming out. So, yes. holy smokes, oh looking God. forward to yeah. checking that out and uh, watching all those myself. Can't wait to put it up on Schoolism. Yeah, no, Schoolism is such a crazy good uh, uh, library of uh, so much good knowledge. It's uh, you have the some of the best people in the world, like Craig Mullins, for example, or Nathan Hawks, or you know, it's uh, yeah. Um, can't recommend schoolism enough. It's really crazy source for lots and lots of knowledge. It's well, like, it's like Netflix, but with all the best content. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like the more you watch this Netflix, the better your career gets, as opposed to watching <laughs> just Netflix. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's true. Hey, Bobby, I had a question. Yeah, go for it. Hey, Nikolai. Uh, really, really uh, enjoy your work. Just looking at your uh, your Instagram, and and it's almost like you were groomed for the study today because all the colors are uh, right on point. Um, I had a question just in regards to your history and the mm. tools that you used. You know, because I, I was kind of listening to the beginning of your talk, and you had just the basic tools. I mean, super basic, not even kind of what we have nowadays. Mm. Was the transition coming from where you were previously, and then having this like I mean, just this abundance of tools now that you can use all of these different, you know, techniques and, and just everything else that is in the market now. It, yeah. Was there a almost like a like a stall for you because of the fact that there was so much now that you had to choose from versus just a basic thing that you kind of adapted to and were able to put work out? No, because I I started with the Procreate when it was a very simple drawing painting tool. And uh, I haven't really switched uh, since that. So I, I just stuck with Procreate. And, and that has evolved a lot, right? But uh, it's been a gradual uh, evolve uh, with Procreate. So it's, it hasn't been from a simple tool to a very professional tool. It, it just every update, it had some more tools. So it's it was easy to to kind of uh, keep up with all the new uh, stuff that came with Procreate. And every now and then I would try another drawing software, but I very quickly just like, ah, I, I don't, uh, I'm gonna go back to Procreate because that was, yeah, just so comfortable in that. And I don't miss uh, anything that I, that I have in the, any other software that would kind of like weigh up for that. So, yeah, I, I know it's a lot to choose from now. You know, it's a lot of choices, but um, just pick Procreate and then you'll, uh, that's all you need. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, no problem. 
Anybody else? They're all busy painting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Well, you're starting to get your painting nice and crazy here, turning it up on the whole, uh, you know, Blade Runner vibe, Nico. Yeah. yeah Super now cool. I, uh, yeah. Now I started to. Uh... Is that an English expression to to get blood on the tooth or so? No, <laughs> but we could maybe start it. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a Norwegian expression then. Blood on the yeah. tooth. Yeah, when you get you get the taste for it, then you sort of get yeah, oh. the mo the momentum in a way. Ah. Rumpotam, you say. It's probably like a. Back from the Viking, when you first taste blood, then you then it starts to become fun, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds like it could have derived from Viking times. That'd be neat. Yeah, and kind of <laughs> crazy at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I was um, watching this. Uh, what's that? Go ahead. I I, I'm, I'm again I'm just focusing into... on silhouettes here just to get them kind of up and running and then I alpha lock that and then to play with the pace and the the value and color to ah. to sort of bring it towards us or push it further away. But uh it's nice to have that like full on opacity in the beginning to just create the shape. Yeah, your hard edges really, really read very very well mm -hmm. with the subtle mm -hmm. tone differences you know it's very cool mm -hmm. somebody was just saying something i think uh, i was trying to ask uh, something sorry um i'm not really into apple product and i was wondering because lots of people are, are the same good thing about uh, these drawing programs appropriate and mm -hmm. I was uh, wondering if there is a, a suggestion for for a new tablet uh, in uh, in Apple product. If there is uh, any suggestion, a different type of tablet, you mean, other than the iPad? Yeah, is there any different kind of uh, iPad tablet or? Well, it's I the range. Really know. Yeah, it's it's the range that the iPad has from the iPad Mini to the regular iPad, the iPad Air, and the iPad Pro, which okay. all come in kind of different sizes. And uh, the only recommendation I would do is you don't need an iPad Pro, but you, I would highly recommend one that is compatible with uh, a, an I, Apple Pencil, because the Apple Pencil is such a makes a huge difference. Uh, it's such a good, uh, very, very sensitive pen. So, but if it's the iPad mini or the iPad Pro or anything in between, that doesn't really matter. The painting experience is very similar. P pretty much the same. Okay. It's, it's down to screen size, like how, how small or how big you are comfortable uh, drawing. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. To to add to that, I would recommend getting the version where the pen is magnetic, because um, for me, I have the the previous version, and it really sucks when you're in a flow, you're really into the drawing or painting, and there's only ten percent left on the pen. So yeah. that that just uh, is is slightly inconvenient. So if yeah. if I were to recommend, I would. You know, say you get I, I agree. The <laughs> yeah, the the way to charge the pen is so much better with the mm -hmm. that's the newer iPad Pros, but also the iPad Air, the newer iPad Air, also has that mm -hmm. magnetic. It's kind of like a small iPad Pro. But I um, yeah, I remember I used to be so afraid like putting it in in the power jack yeah. and you're like yeah. oh my god this thing's gonna break right off if i'm not yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you gotta like, keep it far far away from everything some echoing there yeah 
No, I, I was also so afraid. Like, sit, if you're on the train or on the bus and your pen is like sticking out in the aisle, <laughs> and you're guarding it like a dog, you know, it's like <laughs> having the yeah. arm around it. <laughs> I, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, but I had that for, for a long time and I never, I know there's a flexibility there. It doesn't break that easy, but still, it's a bit, it, it's better when it's the magnetic part. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Yeah, and the pen's mm. slightly lighter as well, which is nice, like the newer mm. um, Apple Pencil. Yeah. Like last year when, uh, or no, uh, 2018 now, uh, at Lightbox, uh, like w w with your background behind you there, uh, Bobby. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember I did the, both of my talks on the iPad Mini, actually. And, and live paints on that one because I had some trouble with my iPad Pro. It was a bit glitchy, so I, I didn't dare to use it uh, <laughs> at Lightbox, mm -hmm. so I did uh, did everything on the Mini. That is so neat, though, that that's what you carry around. Like, speaking of Lightbox, I was running around with, like, big Cintiq monitors and, like, you know, heavy laptops and the desktops and all this stuff just sweating. Uh, it yeah, would have been nice yeah. if everybody had they're just they just need a iPad mini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just pass those around. Yeah. I, that doesn't I, work yeah. for me though. It doesn't work for me. I don't know. Like I like um, I guess so much not... of the stuff I, I wanna paint it to like photo real levels a lot of times or something like that where it's like very, very subtle changes of things. Mm. Mm. And I don't know. Maybe I'll try it again. It, it, it. Well, it gets into a bit more zoom. Like the smaller the screen, you, the more you have to like zoom in and zoom out. Uh, I also use sometimes Procreate Pocket on the iPhone, and that's uh, with what your uh, finger. Yeah. Really, and you <laughs> could do stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like back wow. to the first iPad in a way. But it's a smaller screen, and uh, yeah, it's very small. That's that's but, amazing. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's still very good. Like you can do. I've done a few things which are basically as detailed as the stuff I do on the iPad. It's just a bit more labor in case of zooming in and out because it, uh, yeah, it is a limitation for for sure with the, the small screen but it's great to get a sketch going if you're like sitting on the metro or on the bus or whatever and you just want to be a little like ninja pad you know you don't want to draw attention to yourself with uh, starting to draw on the bigger tablet just to get the phone and the finger maybe you can wow draw some people or you know it's very mm -hmm. uh, it's cool it's a uh, you have a Basically everything you have in Procreate, you have in Procreate Pocket as well. So it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, but so small. I don't know. I, I've tried. I can't do it. <laughs> I just can't do it. Like, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I, I missed, uh, you know, it, it has two sort of disadvantages. One is that the screen is smaller. The other thing is that your finger is big. Yeah. So it's, uh, <laughs> that That's a bit annoying. I look. If if the Apple Pencil would work on the iPhone, I would, you know, then it's... Uh, that could be something. That could be something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that That's, one. Yeah. So a lot of times My with the phone. iPad or the Procreate Pocket or whatever, I'm doing these shapes or whatever. I don't even know what the shape I drew is until I lift up my finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just guessing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have Don't to zoom in like a bit more. <laughs> <burning. laughs> what was that? Uh, no, um, don't you feel like your fingers are burning when you draw on the screen for a long time? Uh, that they I are warm? <laughs> Anybody ever fall asleep on their Cintiq monitor? <laughs> it's like <laughs> thinking about, uh, is this good for my finger? I don't know if any, anybody's falling asleep on their monitor but i wonder about that one like, yeah no if, i i notice yeah. if it is really warm like summertime 
uh, drawing on the iPad, it becomes really sweaty. Uh, and mm. then it's harder to drag your hand around. Then it's, yeah, it's a bit more, just have to clean the screen a bit more often or wear, wear some sort of glove or something. Yeah, do you have one of those gloves where it's like two fingers uh, are not covered by the glove, you know? I no, have I, one. Yeah, I never Yeah, it, it looks never like um, It looks like this. Oh, see. Yeah. It, it's go. very handy, especially during the summertime. Yeah. Because, yeah, my hand gets sweaty, especially when the, the, the heat from the Cintiq you know, transfers mm. to my hand. I'm trying to do a stroke, and I'm just like, ah. <laughs> and then the it gets all jagged. So this is this is very handy. Yeah. Did you buy that glove like that? Like it's especially like that, or did you cut? Oh no, I my my boyfriend got it for me as a gift or as like a surprise gift on Amazon. So okay. I'm sure you can find something very cheap. So it's a thing. It's a thing. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my um, wife I, also. I... <laughs> Yeah, has something in her hand. She's also uh, an artist working on the iPad. She does storyboards. So, yeah, she also likes to have something around mm -hmm. her hand. Yeah, yeah. and th this is nice because it's actually breathable. Um, I remember back in college, I took a regular glove and I thought I was smart by cutting a hole, <laughs> but it actually kept more heat inside my hand and it just got sweaty and uncomfortable. So. Yeah, it's highly recommend. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess it depends a bit on the material, what you want to use. Yeah. yeah. I see in some I have, a, oh, yeah. I have a Hayon tablet and it it is sold with uh, with this kind of glove. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah, and I don't even know how to use that without the glove. Because yeah. <laughs> oh. the glove is kind of silky and you move it really easily on the yeah. monitor. You can oh. slide through the monitor in, in any direction, and if not, I, I can't slide at all. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I made mine out of a sock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It didn't come well. with a glove. <laughs> I looked at the tutorial, I learned to sew. It's still, That's yeah. Awesome. It's still yeah. here. I don't know. Oh, nice. I tried using another glove because um, it's be it's better to have two gloves if you're using it all the time to interchange them. Oh, interesting. Mm. Why? I didn't think Why is that? Well, because one will I, get like moist or something, like from getting sweaty. It, it gets uh, dirty kind of quickly. I don't know. Maybe oh, it's just my okay, hands. Okay. Got it. So I wash them, <laughs> I wash them pretty often. Oh, and okay. I, like I, tried, it like a sock. <laughs> I tried using another glove or yet yeah, other kind of material while my glove was um, drying, but nothing worked as well because it's uh, very elastic and yeah. it's very uh, huh. like slidey. It's um, it's very silky. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I would I have figured I'm silk would be the material. best material because it kind of keeps yeah. it cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's look for some silk gloves or something. <laughs> yeah. All fancy doing Yeah, work. like the ladies use the, the very high ones that go yeah, like, yeah. like, <laughs> like all the way up to your that, It'd be then so funny. Smoke, yeah, you have to smoke a cigarette with this long thing, <laughs> like the mouthpiece before the cigarette. But... All right, next Lightbox Expo, we bring a long cigarette holder with our <laughs> silk gloves. And then... You know, we walk up to whoever, you take your glove off and you slap them. You go, I challenge you to a magma duel, sir, or ma'am. Oh, and then <laughs> that'd that's be so true. funny. Yeah, that's... Oh my gosh. I look forward, like, you know, we haven't had hugs in so, so long, so just a slap with the glove would be <laughs> nice at this point. Yeah. Uh, no, I had. I, you know, since I started with the iPad in the beginning, there was no like uh, palm rejection or anything. So I just had to get used to not resting my hand on the iPad. So that's sort of just my trick. I don't rest my hand on it, but I might rest it on whatever it's standing on. Like, ah. I'm not sure if you see this, but I have this easel that I built. Uh -oh. uh, so I, I might lean my hand on that. Uh, but I 
I very, very seldom lean my hand on the screen itself. Or wow. I'm just hover, hovering on top mm. of the no. Yeah, that's my problem. I didn't have the glove. I, I should get a glove because, you know, I would <laughs> constantly smudge my drawing by accident. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. Glove is good. Glove or is good. Or you can good. have one of those, uh, if you see the old painters that were painting on the big canvas, oil, for example, they would have a stick that goes across that's yes. resting on the wall or something and lean it on that, you know? Yes. That That's sounds so funny, funny like, like doing that with my <laughs> iPad, you know. Yeah, yeah, you see like people using that when they're drawing on their iPad. That's yeah. that's elegant. That's very elegant. Yeah. <laughs> Could be a little chopstick with your or long something. cigarette, you know, holder yeah. doing the thing with the pole. Yes. <laughs> it's it's a cigarette holder, it's an apple pencil, and it's something you can lean on. So it's like your spare apple pencil. You just have one all the time you can lean your and, um, <laughs> all good it's the next trend for artists. Yeah. Hey, can I uh, ask a question to Nico real quick? Yeah. Yep. Please. Oh, we actually have a um a question coming in from YouTube from Alexander. He wants to know if Nico has a new course coming out on schoolism or not. Uh, yes, I can say yes. It's. Uh... Uh, it's being made here right now, in the brain, uh, yes. but it uh, is definitely coming a new course out. Woohoo! Yeah, it's baking. very cool. So work in progress. Well, we're eagerly awaiting it, so we can't wait to see it. Yeah, uh, cool. I'm gonna <laughs> make something good. It's yeah. gonna be appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually re kind of motivating, re inspiring me to pick up Procreate again and like try it out again. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. And now that I'm thinking, uh, it's because I didn't have a good glove. <laughs> right? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's why. I'm right. going to try it again. That's the secret. Yeah. Or <laughs> sock. I didn't have a good glove or sock. <laughs> I think you maybe you can also just do this, you know, you just pull your mm. uh, sleeve, sleeve, sleeve. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. True. Some works. some sweaters have this thumb, like a hole for mm -hmm. the thumb, so it actually covers the palm. You can just buy a, like a Procreate hoodie, for example. I, <laughs> Procreate should definitely make that merch. It's like yeah. a hoodie and glove yeah. in one. <laughs> They have they have too little merge. They need to make some more merge. Yeah. Okay, I got some uh, iPad or Procreate questions here. This one's from Anonymous. Do you recommend the those uh, paper feel kind of screen protectors? What do you what do you use, Nico or Masse or anybody? Yeah, I I don't use any um, protection. I oh. so it's just the iPad screen. But I, I know that people really like the the paper like the one that's called paper like, and I know that they came out with a number two now paper like two, so that's I think that is the best of what I've heard, uh, and like the name says, it's gonna give you more paper like feel, a bit more resistance for the for the pen. So, and it's also a, a protection for your screen. You know, I dropped my iPad uh, not too long ago, and I had one of those glass, those thin glass protectors, and then yeah. I cracked the protector, and then my iPad was fine. Ooh. Oh, Good. that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. I was, Ooh. like, so freaked out. And then yeah. once I saw the crack, I forgot I even had a protector on there because it's been a while. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, good job, responsible Bobby. You did that a while back. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. My goodness. Did you, did you have a case for that? Or it was just bare, just the glass? I'm an idiot. I took it out of the case. Because my case, it was like deteriorating and I was messing up my, my iPad. Mm. Uh, I think it I actually see. weakened the screen protector part because 
the case I had to put the iPad into the case and there's a metal part that was protruding out that shouldn't and it's kind of chipping away anyways yeah. boring stuff boring stuff <laughs> no but I I, re I recommend getting a case that's covering the corners it's not you know because a lot of the Apple products are just on the front and the back but around it's really exposed so if you drop it on the corner it will still get the whole impact Mm -hmm. But I would recommend something that that goes around the corners. That's gonna yeah. So yeah. you have a case that protects the corners of your iPad, and do you have a keyboard? If so, what kind of keyboard do you have, or any other gear that you have related? Well, I have. This is my case now, and it's uh, the cool thing is that it it's a uh, easel. Is that what it's called? I can adjust oh. the the angle oh so it, i don't need to carry an extra thing that's cool did and, you buy that or was that part yeah. of the thing that you made no uh this one i bought it's uh it's so darker i can't see what it's called let me see i think the name is on there somewhere I don't think it is. <laughs> Maybe I can find it somewhere. What about a keyboard? Do you use like a Bluetooth keyboard or anything? No, I had to choose, basically. Uh, another good thing is that the pen can sit on the outside. It still has a cover around, but the pen is uh, in, in uh, you know, it's like a yeah. shoe. Like it fits in. It's not just magnet to the side, but it's actually it's secure. Down a bit. It's, uh, well, it's like a little insert. Like a, there's a little clip or something that clips into. Yeah, it's a like a shape for the pen that it actually sits down in, so it mm. doesn't uh, it doesn't slide off or so. Yeah, <clears throat> no, I with this cover, I cannot have the uh, the keyboard that that's connected so yeah i had to choose i because i also love writing on the keyboard but it was either uh, having this cover so i don't need to bring that easel or it was uh, yeah having the keyboard cover so that makes sense yeah let's take a look but at it's... what the people on discord have been doing thus far that's cool. There's like a rainbow version. That's really yeah. neat. <laughs> like a laser, big laser. Yeah. Oh, these are so great. They're so neat to see. Cool. Div's doing something really neat there. Bunch of people. <laughs> cool, the top right one there with the, all that purple. Yeah. That's so cool. Right on, everybody. Good job. Mm -hmm. So cool that nine people can just paint on the same canvas at the same time. That's crazy. Yeah, right? It's funny how, like, to think that nothing like this has, you know, really been popular until now. Yeah. So it's nice to have it, finally. Yeah. But, but it hasn't uh, really existed until now has it i don't I like not that i know of not to this level there's other software where you can do more rudimentary kind of marks and stuff like a whiteboard mm. um but i don't i've never seen anything where you can do painting to this level there's some stuff where you could do some painting mm. but i don't think it was to this level no. i'm biased i'm biased <laughs> no. um there's a question in slido that is asking um i guess this is more of like a nico's question or answer um anonymous asks is animating in procreate easier compared to animating in photoshop hmm. Good have question. you have you animated in photoshop before no i i haven't animated in photoshop i would expect it to be about the same like it's very mm -hmm. I'm not sure if 
I don't think one layer in Photoshop is one frame, but I'm not sure. I'm just guessing now. But uh, I think they're a bit different. Still just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably about the same. Like if you, if you like animating kind of straightforward, traditional, classic animation, then it works really well. Like that's what you do in Procreate. It doesn't do mm. any in-betweens for you and you, you cannot like have an object on this side of the frame and then move in the timeline and then put it on there and it will do any in-betweens. It doesn't do that. So you have to do everything yourself, basically. But mm -hmm. you... Uh, so it's very much like traditional animation. But you have uh, like warp and liquify and stuff like that that can help you. You know, you see you have the onion skinning and you have... Uh, yeah, all the typical tools you need for... Mm -hmm traditional classical animation um, but I'm not not totally sure about Photoshop how it's built there uh, from from what I remember I remember um, back in college I helped uh, one of my seniors with their um, graduating film and they were using Photoshop for animating uh, mm. so based on my experience with that I actually find procreate a lot easier to you know just jump into and you know everything is just into like intuitive and especially if you're already like to draw and uh, procreate it's mm. just like you know a couple buttons that you have to press and then everything's there for you yeah so yeah yeah it's very and you convenient. can have your uh, your foreground group on your background group and then you can sandwich any animation in between there and you can uh, adjust the length, how many frames one frame should last, like a frame hold. Mm -hmm. And you can adjust your uh, your frames per second, how quick your your playback will be, and, and then you can export any, any sort of, uh, yeah, like if you want with the alpha channel or just layers or movie or like, uh, is it called PNG? No. Um, GIF, GIF animation, yep. Yeah, I remember doing That's a couple so uh, of like just some run cycles and a hopping cycle for like some creatures. Took me forever. Like, <laughs> obviously I'm not a good animator because I, I don't really do that, you know, but um, I, uh, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I really respect people that can animate. Holy smokes, there's so much to think about it takes time it's really it's a time consuming thing but it's uh, it's so cool to be able to do everything in one tool like it's um, I made some animations like I yeah like on the Instagram or my YouTube channel I also on my YouTube channel I also explain a bit how I how I did my my latest animation the 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 drunken guy that's drinking from his bottle, standing in the snow. That's sort of the most recent one. Let me see if oh, I can pull awesome. that up. But it took time. It was, uh, I think it's 64 layers. So the character is drawn 64 times, and then I think he has like eight colors on him. So you have to draw... <laughs> uh... Yeah, so you have to... You have to draw everything, uh, like the colors, and I did the snow first, and then the flames, and that was like an eight-frame loop. And then ah. I did the animation of the character, and then I had to sandwich these together. So, painted the environment first, though, like that was the first thing. So, and the yeah. glow over top—that's a separate layer. Sorry. Ooh. And the glow that's coming from the fire, that's a separate layer on top? Yeah, that's that's an overlay layer that I painted. That's just a, a clip mask to the character. So I made that once, and then I had to duplicate it for each frame and merge it together. That's so, so much that's fun. The... That's amazing. I mean, just seeing this, it's... I already, I can already imagine it as like a movie or a TV show, and for for, <laughs> totally. for that tool to be available to anyone. 
well i mean obviously you have to pay for the app and the ipad but i'd watch it it's it's yeah it's <laughs> amazing like the quality of finish that you know he can come up with i believe you have yeah, but... some other ones oh this one's uh, the... the painting sped yeah, that up. Was, uh, yeah but that animation that he, he i think the animation lasts for like uh, six seven seconds or something that took me a week or two to do you know it's oh, holy <laughs> smokes wow yeah. i think one week i think it took like in in a regular work hours so it's yeah that's the thing it takes time yeah that's awesome i also have uh, like a guy in the office uh and here's a little one that that's like a quick thing to do right that's just a goofy little uh, test now you're <laughs> Your Procreate class, it does touch on the animation stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, the school is, of course, it's it's nine videos that cover different subjects, and two of them cover animation. So it's uh, I go a good stretch into it. So you you will know the animation tool well through that. I see these are in black and white. Do you usually... I'm not sure if I've seen every single one of your kind of paintings, but yeah, this one starts in black and white as well. Is that kind of like um, part of your process to start off monochromatic first? Yeah, I most often do just to get the values up and running and the shapes. Um, but I, I try to introduce the color kind of early on, but I, because I know that value is more important than color, like, there's a saying that you, you cannot really save bad value with good color, but you can save bad color with good value. Like it's more mm. important. Um, makes my tooth bleed. It, no, just joking. <laughs> I don't know. That makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. The Viking, <laughs> yeah, the Viking expression. No, so it's, it's uh, because in the beginning, it's so much about the composition and stuff. I don't want to worry about light and color uh, from the total beginning. It's nice to just focus on the composition and the shapes and the and stuff. So when I feel like that's up and running, then I can introduce color because I, I, I still I don't like to go super detailed in grayscale and 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 go into color mode late in the process because then then it feels a bit um, uh, it, it quickly goes into becoming sort of just, uh, you know, like the old black and white photos that was tinted. It, mm -hmm. it feels a bit like that. So I, I tried mm -hmm. to introduce color as early as possible, but uh, I want to get my value sketch working first. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah, just a Stranger Things homage there. Love it. Yeah, so it's really, you do generally, of course, generally you go monochromatic first and then you start colorizing as a base, as a very kind of in the beginning base and then you're laying over top direct color, right? Yeah. Got it. So I might, I might uh, have my value sketch first and then I might just put a layer on top in overlay mode and just, just add colors directly in that uh, just to have a beginning and then mm -hmm. I just clip mask and merge that to all of my layers so that it looks the same as if it was on top and then I work with curves for example just to adjust some final adjustments and then I paint with real paint or color from that point on can we talk a little bit about this animation? Like, how long did yes. this take you? Because it's so much longer, and there's so much more involved. Yeah. <clears throat> and it took me... Um, I think that took me two weeks to do. Wow. From beginning to end. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome well, that the van I mean, animates, that big freaking van animates. It's so neat. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's a bit, you know, because in Procreate, every every frame or every layer is a frame or every layer group is a frame. And uh, and I'm working in HD resolution at the end, so um, 1920 by 1080 pixels. And then I have 250 pixels, no, sorry, 250 layers. And I'm pretty much hitting that roof in the end <laughs> with around 20 second animation with 12 frames per second. So, uh, but the car, and the the cat creature and the guy they're all s in several layers so you have to keep mm -hmm. your it might be also a norwegian expression but your tongue straight in your mouth like you have to stay on top of uh because you have to merge like you will you will hit that ceiling pretty quick if your layer group consists of like six layers also with the the guy that's uh, drinking from the bottle, the swig. Because then yeah, I had three layers of snow, uh, two layers of flame, then the barrel, then the guy. Oh, wow. Uh, and yeah. the guy was two layers, and that has to be... <laughs> mm -hmm. And some are in different blend modes. So it's also like the animation we see now. It's also... You have the river, you have the animation that consists of, and you have the character that also needs to reflect. And yeah, so... I like these little brain nuts as well to kind of figure out how I can do that stuff. But uh, uh, yeah, just to breathe That's some life nice. into the into the environment at the same time as the character. So cool. Can yeah. I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. Um, I haven't used Procreate per se, but I was wondering. I am not in the industry yet, like in the um biz dev or animation industry but i was wondering have any of you guys had any experience using non-industry standard software yeah well uh, is procreate the industry standard software like i'm not sure if uh, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not i usually see photoshop so that's what i guess anything that isn't photoshop um, yeah no i i uh, as long as you have layers, like you can also extract the PSD from a Photoshop file from Procreate. I think that's important. Uh, and that's totally possible. And, and then, then it doesn't matter if you did it in Photoshop or in Procreate. Uh, I, mm. I, I feel like Procreate is becoming more... I don't know if it's like industry standard, but it's in the, it's like the, the quality is there um, for it to be <clears throat> enough for like industry standard, Yeah, I find. Because yeah, many people w will want that Photoshop file, like the PSD with the layers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as long as that's possible, I also know other painting softwares can, can export the PSD file. And I think as long as you can do that, uh, then it's all good. And some projects I've also been on have a brush set that comes with it that several people are working on the same style and they want everybody to use the same brushes. That's also mm -hmm. totally possible in uh, Procreate. So, yeah, I don't see a reason why you, unless you're working for Adobe, then I think they might uh, <laughs> <laughs> hold a grudge, you know. Yeah. Other than that, it doesn't matter what kind of software you use. Okay, cool. Mm. Um, I use Krita most of the time, and I was wondering. I was always wondering if I should um, like I initially learned Photoshop, but um, other software like Krita or, and um, Clip Studio are a little bit more comfortable for me. And I, was, yeah. I was just wondering, like, if I ever got a job, would that be an issue? But thanks. I think it's yeah, like no, I... it's like what art school did you attend? It pretty much doesn't really matter, you know, as long as the painting looks good, right? In the very end, mm -hmm. nobody's gonna care that much. Like when people were looking at magma, going, 
oh yeah well you know there's other drawing painting programs i was like well you know you can't paint like this in those other collaborative painting programs um but then again it's like if i was using a lesser program i'd st still probably be able to paint something half decent just because of the knowledge that's in that's you know that's been like built up learning all these years and mm -hmm. Same thing with Nico, right? Like Nico, you you were mentioning you don't usually use magma. This is like your second time using it or something. But yeah, it's third, it, I think third. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, then you've got plenty <laughs> of time. You got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> right, but it's like it's you, your fundamentals that really help you to translate from one thing to another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think maybe in some studios won't let you bring your iPad in and out, you know, because oh. of security and because of uh, non-disclosure agreements and stuff like that. So they might want you to work on a, on a station that's there and then you may not be able to use Procreate or Krita or so. So that's, mm -hmm. but that's the only sort of thing I could think of where that could be hard because I, I also worked in a studio before I and then I was just sitting with my iPad but uh, I know that that studio now Storm Studios they they work on Disney stuff as well so they are I couldn't do that now then yeah. um, but I'm free I'm been freelancing for like six years or so now so I yeah people I don't had, care what software I, I use I had the same mm -hmm. kind of problem uh, problem in uh, my studio. Uh, yeah. We had Photoshop installed on our work computers, only yeah. Photoshop. And uh, we had a tracking app that would track uh, how, much, how many hours have we worked on the computer that day. So if I would use iPad for my working drawings, then I would track nothing on my work computer. But I had to track uh, a specific amount of hours, so I wasn't able to use iPad because of that. Mm. Oh. oh my gosh, that's like micromanaging. Wow, yeah, it's like prison, prison stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I remember uh, when so our paintings are finished, and I remember the first thing I thought was like, "Wow, Nico's piece looks like a a painting that I would see in a concept art book." <laughs> You know what I mean, Bobby? Where it's like yeah. that that just like it's the whole environment's built, the mood's built, the like a story's built. So yeah, it does I guess in the end it doesn't really matter which tools you have. So, you know, and Magma can kind of achieve the same kind of stuff for concept art. So I thought that was like really, really awesome to see, you know, you come you know, Nico, you come up with this painting with like you know, limited uh tools last uh last thoughts shall we um nico <laughs> since i have your painting up here maybe you could go first things that you would have done differently or you know how you might have felt about your painting um things that you like things that you didn't like whatever any kind of thoughts you got the only thing is or i know that the, the characters in the background and Horizon line is something that doesn't really add up here. They feel like they're, uh, or it doesn't feel like it's a, a level street because the people on the left are higher up. And I think the horizon line is just where his coat is sort of above the, the legs. So in this way, that horizon line should hit these guys in the same place on the body if they're about the same height as him. So that's just nerdy perspective stuff that uh, I see. Nice. But uh, yeah, other than that, I I think it's okay. Um, the silhouette. I could have been a bit more creative like you guys were. That's. Uh, uh, but I saw it too late when I saw that you were doing fun <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's a great job. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah. I'll go next since mine's just underneath. You know, I, after 
painting underneath your painting, I was like, ah, I wish I put a lot more stuff in here, more aliens, more stuff, more descriptions of the buildings. I wish I started off with very clean edges like you um, and incorporated soft brushes on top of the very clean edges. Uh, but overall, I liked just playing around with the idea. Yeah, well, it's a fun piece. <laughs> Um, I say, I mean, say for me, I wish I got more hard edges in certain areas because I guess I find it easier to go from hard edge to soft edge, but then the opposite is like a lot harder because then it's like when you're trying to clean it up, some parts might look very choppy and uneven. Um, but I think overall, I'm kind of happy with the story I made. <laughs> I love yours. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, I love cats. I love cats now. Yeah, and the foreground is is great. It it kind of looks like the foreground is more the real characters of the story, and then the the cats in the background are more like robotic, like robot uh, stuff. You know, it's uh, cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this was overall a very fun challenge to do. Yeah, fantastic, and. Uh... Just to let everybody know what's happening coming up this week, uh, Thursday, or yeah, Thursday, we're going to take a little break, all right? Things are getting a little crazy over here in the studio. we got a lot of work um, to do, so, but we have this wonderful special video we're going to premiere. Um, you know, as you know, everybody's locked down. There's this amazing, beautiful exhibition that has been closed in um, in Paris at the Museum Art Ludique. Uh, it's the 25th anniversary of DreamWorks exhibition. So uh, my dear friend Jean-Jacques Lunier, one of the owners of the museum, does a tour for us through the exhibition. It's very, wow. very cool. So that is going to premiere on Thursday. And then Monday, it's going to be with Med. Ahmed Aldori will be joining us and just crushing it, um, you know, through the whole painting. So that's going to be fantastic to uh, come back and join us there. Don't forget to subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel so you can find your way back easier. And a big thank you to everybody in Discord, all the mods, my wonderful assistant, Jamie, and YouTube. Thank you, Jamie. My co-host, Masei Seki, and the biggest thank you, of course, goes to our wonderful dear friend uh nico thank you so much for joining us it's an honor thank you so much man it's been a blast <laughs> wonderful